Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Welcome back, and today I have for you a wonderful round on the fields of glory. Myself and my girlfriend Demon Bunny joined the Commander Art for a few rounds. We were not on voice at the time as the day was simply too warm. However, I shall go over the strats and plays we made in this extremely close and well fought round. I back up art with my warrior, which is the perfect role to complement the Dark Knight going for big plays. And the results speak for themselves. Thank you all for tuning in, enjoy today's video, and I shall see you all in the next one. Right away, we are able to head to our large crystal. What we are looking for at the start are cliff jumpers. Good teams will rotate around rather than jump from the cliff, to avoid being trapped up against that corner, which is only made worse should the third team arrive through the choke. And with the Anders a master like this, Art is free to make the first play, with myself close behind. For this, you will typically activate your blood wetting, in order to heal through the engage, opening with Primal Rend. Into Salted Earth draws them in for that mass stun. This one play makes your Dark Knight's jump so much easier. You then have Orogeny and Cyclone at the ready for damage and healing. It is very important not to greed. At first look, this may look like a large amount of damage, and most teams will heal through this. This will, however, heavily eat away at their MP reserve. Back out an elixir to fall, ready to dive back in. The strength to this combo lies in its consistency. In the first battle, your aim is to outlast the enemy team. Once they are running on empty, your team is free to walk on through. The opening battle can last several minutes, as all teams need to build through for their limit break. Any battle highs earned here early on can have a major impact on the rest of the round, and with a commander such as Art on your team, later on these allow for some absolute steamrolls. The warrior is very capable of taking the lead role, however, in a match like this, treat yourself as the off-tank. A warrior's involvement with the Dark Knight strategy greatly improves the overall success rate, and when your limit break is ready, guarantees free kills. Moving ahead slightly after a 3-minute battle with the Adders, we now have free reign to rapidly burn down the Northern Crystal, further pushing us into the lead, and allow us then the time to rotate in order for a potential flank against the enemy teams. This was not yet required, and we rotate east, furthering our lead more with yet another large crystal. Burning through this one, we are now ready for some juicy action in mid. The key here is to play off their current distraction, and as in the Maelstrom are busy with one another, with many no doubt busy licking the ice. We need to get into position as a group, and await Art's engage. Using the walls as cover, he picks the adders to be our next target. I spot our Dragoon also using their Limit Break. However, I had already engaged with Primal Rend, and missed my timing to Limit Break for him. I do continue through with my Limit Break, as the Shield Break could help secure kills on weakened targets. The adders right now have been established as the weakest alliance so far, and this engage is for the aims of easy kills, on the team we believe to be the weakest for easy battle highs. After giving chase a while longer on weakened targets, I rotate back to meet up with Art, who is currently looking for the right moment to engage against the Maelstroms. However, a small group of Anders beat us to it. We do snag one unlucky white mage along the way, before turning our attention onto the Adder's Monk. We stop giving chase there, as we need to push north to fight the much more coordinated Maelstrom, who will very quickly catch up on score being uncontested at the Northern Crystal, and you do not want to allow them to get a huge lead, as that makes later decisions much harder. Speeding through the choke, Art has his sights set onto the crowd towards the back, and with a firm grasp upon his sword and two huge balls, he sorted Earth into the huge pile, meeting his end shortly after, as the team follow-up was halted by the enemy Dark Knight, and with their warrior shutting down our guards, this push is now over. I place myself in the way to defend those remaining to rotate out, but in their stubbornness, the Anners get their flanking revenge upon us, and in doing so, has greatly evened out the scores. These are my favourite types of rounds, where after some time back and forth, all teams get their shit together, and the pressure is then on, with the scoring being even for most of the match. After that very clearly tactical reset, we speed through these small ice as fast as we can, even pushing across to invade and steal from the Adder's side. These extra nodes all add up, and have kept us in that first place. And shortly after, I am able to meet up at the large crystal to the east once more. Now here is when the game picks up. Once one team reaches around the 1k mark, Shatter turns into phase 2, and is now our turn for the revenge flank into the Adder's. Learning from my earlier mistake, I limit break much sooner allowing for a Dragoon within the Alliance to jump down in a blaze of glory, and within seconds half of the Adders drop before us. This pushes Art and myself into a battle height too, 
which in the hands of Dark Knights and Warriors can be the much needed lifeline. And this push does not stop there. Playing off the Maelstrom's distraction, fighting the remaining adders, we were able to rush in to sneak a few extra kills. Only this time around, we retreat much sooner. To avoid what happened last time around, we still hold the lead for now, and right now we need to avoid any misplays. One bad team fight could easily flip us into third. Once you're in third place, decisions then must also impact two other teams. Whereas in first place, you have many more options available to you, as all you need to do is maintain that first place. And this right here is Shatter done right. We are balancing out the objective time and the PvP side. Too many battles and one team could sneak up with good spawns. Too much objective time and your alliance has no battle highs, which then leads to being steamrolled over and over again by the team that does. Should you be 800 score in the lead, this almost always results in coming third place. Many players right now are obsessed with trying to throw a game as fast as possible for their free XP. However, just a small amount of effort for team play and you can win those games much faster than you can throw them. Watch next, the outcome of just a small amount of team effort, with the Maelstrom pinned between both teams. I engage first to activate my Limit Break, shutting down their guards. Arts ready with his Salted Earth, and with those behind us. In a blink of an eye, the Maelstrom drop 100 score. And with that beautiful play, we are now halfway through this match. I shall end my voice over here, as not to spoil the remainder of the game. Well played to Art for the solid command work, and remember to always back them up. Outside of a few who flood spam the chats, 90% of the commanders go through hell, doing the best they can to help players get more wins. Enjoy the remainder of this game? Let me know your thoughts on commanders down below, and I will see you all in the next one.